Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO Retrospective Podcast, where we talk about the 3DO company, the console, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Threk. How are you doing, Threk? Oh, I'm all right. Uh, it, it's been kind of a day, but I'm hanging in there. How, how are you? I'm doing all right. We're, like, super busy at work right now, so I'm, like, mm-hmm. doing, like, these, like, rush jobs, but, like, I'm also, like, multitasking on, like, three other things at once, so... That that it's your life as a podcaster, isn't it? <laughs> Kinda, yeah, yeah, in a sense. But uh, other than that, it's been all right. Just That's uh, good. getting through the week. Uh, weather's finally warming up around here. Uh, it, it's been warm for us for a while now. So, and I, I don't like it. See, New England is weird. Like, I woke up yesterday; it was like sixty, and then this morning it was like twenty. So. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. That's weird. Um, I've been messing with um, emulation the last couple days, uh, particularly Sega Genesis emulation, because for some reason, I've been watching so much of like Jeff Gertzman ranking the NES games. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I totally stole that idea but used it for the Sega Genesis instead? Right? I don't think he'd care. Um, so I've been, I've been. Thinking about doing that. If if the viewers are interested in that, let me know because I I am set up to like Twitch stream. I've done it before, but it, it's been a while. Uh, but I was trying to find like you know getting the emulation right, and I was most people use RetroArch, but I've been having so many issues with it. Like it's just a pain in the ass, particularly when it comes to this guy, the uh, the eight bit Do M thirty, which is like a like a Saturn style like six button controller and it's a great controller but for some reason it doesn't sync to retroarch very well but i learned of a, a different um multi-system emulator called bizhawk um and i've been using that and it is so much better like it, it doesn't look as nice like it doesn't have a clean ui but it's so much easier to use and just runs perfectly like i don't have to fiddle with all these like using retroarch feels like it's using the ps3 which is like when you're trying to figure out some weird setting issue, you have to like go online to figure it out to be like, where yeah. is that? Is anything on here? Whereas like this, just like go oh, settings, like two things and I'm, I'm there, you know? So the only thing is I don't have all the, the game cover arts boohoo, but you know, it runs really well and it supports retro achievements, which I've been kind of um, into right now, retro achievements there. It, it, they're pretty fun to, to sort of play those old games in that kind of style, you know, and it's easier to get those achievements for those games because usually yeah. they're much smaller. Um, though I was playing Shinobi 3 and I was clearing round one, no problem, but it wasn't giving me the achievement. And the only thing I could think is I was maybe using the unlimited shuriken code and maybe it doesn't like that I use that. Um, it's possible. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, in Revenge of Shinobi and Shinobi 3, if you go into the menu, turn the shuriken counter to zero, and then go into the sound effects till you hear the sound effect of him throwing the shuriken, like play it, and then hover over the zero, and it'll turn to an infinity symbol, and then you're good for the rest of the game. So, I, I don't know. I even, what's cool with retro achievements, you can put like comments on the achievements, being like, how do I get this or whatever? And so, in that, I put, is the unlimited preventing it? Because if it is, I'll turn it off and do it. But, mm. but yeah. But but if you guys want me to stream, I don't know, Booger Man or or Jurassic Park or whatever on the Genesis, let me know. Because I, I I think it would be fun to do. You know. Mm. So. Yeah, I remember the Genesis. Like even like back in like the early emulator days, always had like the most like competent emulators. I think. Yeah, it, it's from what I've gathered, it's pretty easy to emulate, and Sega doesn't care. Like I At still least. have um it's out of date, but I still have a Cake of Fusion on my computer. I, I boot it up every now oh, and yeah. then. Yeah, Cake of Fusion's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, like I just I don't think Sega really cares when it Sega, comes to the emulation. They're just like, Yeah, sure. Sega only doesn't like when you mess with modern stuff because it's brand new. Like, but like that's fair. Old, old shit, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But it, it, it it's kind of topical with the whole Yuzu thing right now. I think the only time Sega ever cared was that one, when they killed that Streets of Rage remake. But I think that's because they were doing Streets of Rage 4 at the time. 
I don't remember that. There was a like a Streets of Rage two remake. I want to say that they were making, and I remember it was like one of the few times Sega went and like killed something. Um, huh. but I remember because like Streets of Rage four got announced like shortly after, I believe, or like like a year later. So it makes me wonder if that's why. It's possible. So, but who knows? But yeah, the whole Nintendo Yuzu thing. Like, did Nintendo go after Yuzu because? Yuzu had like a Patreon, so they were getting money from people. That's my guess. It's really hard to tell with Nintendo sometimes because they they really do just tend to throw lawsuits around like crazy sometimes. But if you notice, they don't go after emulators all willy nilly, like like emulators specifically. They don't like they've never. Well, they only went after Dolphin for like the because Dolphin wanted to go on Steam. Yeah, And then Steam's like, oh, we have to check with Nintendo. And Nintendo said, you know, oh, if you do that, problem. So they didn't do it. And then Nintendo, I guess, had somebody go through their code and found, like, the whole Wii key thing. Um, but I think that got resolved. I don't know. Um, as far as I know, Dolphin still exists as it is. But, like, all the other notable Nintendo emulators kind of... Are, still exist like Nintendo doesn't go after them they typically go after the ROM sites which is the more like legally illegal part like an emulator isn't illegal in and of itself but no they're um, uh, Bleem proved that like years ago yeah and Nintendo doesn't want to open that case again yeah um, so and, and then you see like people on Twitter just being really annoying about it people who like are pro Nintendo like like deep throating that boot you know and then People on the other side who are just like, you know, oh, I always pirate Nintendo always because it's always the right thing to do or whatever. And they're just as annoying about it, you know? Yeah, it's like both sides of the extreme. Yeah, it's dumb, you know, like I don't give a shit what you do, but but I can understand why a company would go after something like this when it comes to it's more modern stuff that they are still trying to sell you. But with but when Nintendo went after, what was it, Citra? 3ds emulator that that felt petty just because they yeah. discovered they were doing that as well and we're like oh we'll, we'll, we'll do that as well you know see th what i found interesting about the whole thing was like i was thinking back to like the uh the connectix emulator from like decades ago mm -hmm. and i remember because that one was famously like sold on store shelves and like there was going to be like an apple like steve jobs famously like uh promoted it at one of the trade shows and the only way Sony got rid of it was, ironically, they bought the company and discontinued, discontinued it. Oh, that's interesting. Like, they couldn't... Legally, they lost every lawsuit because, like, basically the, the courts were like, they didn't illegally steal any of your data. They legit made it from scratch, and it's perfectly legal. <laughs> um, as long... The, the, the reason Sony was mad is because people were finding ways to burn discs in a do stuff which could get around actually buying the games and such um, oh yeah yeah it, it, to be fair in their situation i would understand why they would care yeah you know? i just find it really funny that sony's like solution to like this like problem they couldn't get rid of once they just bought it and discontinued it if you can't be them beat them buy them right there's a lot of theories that that's how PlayStation One emulation has been possible on all these consoles for years as they've been just using the Kinectic software. It I mean it would make sense if if only Sony actually used that PlayStation One em emulator or emulation on their own little service. Yeah, I'm surprised you know? they I'm surprised they didn't keep that with four and five, considering it's so easy to emulate PS1. Yeah. And it when like it's in the what PS Plus Premium tier. You can have like PS One games, but like, aren't the pickings very scarce? Yeah, like, I I haven't looked at the list or anything, but I I imagine it's not great because people are saying, oh, the NSO offerings are better. Yeah, I haven't. I mean, I have Sony physical PS One games. It's not even something I bother with, but yeah, um, yeah, it's not great. I know Bleem, on the other hand, was more of a case of like. Bleem's whole gimmick was that they were um, not only were they emulating the PlayStation games, but they were making them look better um, ah. via software acceleration, and um, they were also releasing them on, on the Dreamcast, which Sony was not <laughs> amused by. That's fair. That's fair. 
But oh. Bleem won all their lawsuits. The only irony, the, the sad irony is they may have won, but Sony just kept suing them until they went bankrupt. I guess it worked. Um, yeah, I, I found a list of them. We won't go through all of them, but it's eh, it's not it's not great. There, there's one Ape Escape game. I'll give them uh, that. Two? Ape, I'm guessing. Just, Ape, just Ape Escape. Oh, Fall original. Oh, the first one? Yeah, yeah that's, that's not a bad game. Ape Escape 2 is on the PS2 one. Yep. No three. So, no, no, not the best in the series, but... Nope. So, Oh, they have War of the Monsters on there. That's great. That's an awesome game. Yeah. I mean... It, I'm glad they're doing something, but I mean, like most things Sony does, it's kind of been half-assed lately. Yeah. That, do you think they're getting into that like PS3 mindset again where they don't have to try as hard, you think? Um, It's really hard to say. Cause I honestly have no clue what any of the big three are really doing right now. Well, Nintendo's just doing what they always do, really. I think well, we're, all, yeah. we're all just kind of waiting for when they decide to tell us about the next Switch or, you know, their next console, which I imagine will be soon. My, my guess is within either this month, like we'll probably hear about it before June, I think, especially if it got delayed the next year. I think we'll yeah. hear about it within three months, I'd say. Um, Xbox is, you know, just doing what they do. You know, I, I like I mean they have first party games on on you know coming up opposed to you know Sony so you know but we'll see but but it's okay because when PS when PlayStation doesn't have any first party games articles come out saying that's a good thing that's fine that's okay but then if Xbox did it everyone would be like oh they're dying and they should just quit you know like they just it doesn't click man you know yeah so. I mean Gaming journalists are hacks anyways for the most part. Oh yeah. Too. There's a couple there's a couple I like, but you know, not I mean there's a, it's like the real media. There's always there's the few that are really good and the rest are kind of shitty, but exactly. It exactly. is what it is. Yeah. As long as you're out there, as long as you're out there playing, playing your classics, you're doing all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. it it's coming, everybody. You know, the funniest thing I shared. Um, so I got the physical copy of um, Lovers Don't Wear Ties for Switch. Mm-hmm. I shared it on Reddit. My God, the comments were so brain dead. It wasn't even funny. What did they say? They were like all like they made it an anime question mark because I had the anime cover out. Oh. It just what? looked better. <laughs> which which Reddit did you post this in? The 3DO Reddit of all things. Um. I I'm sure. If, I'm sure if I go in there, do, do they know about our podcast? Do no. They, do they, <laughs> you should put I, it in there because I was might get tempted, some weird people. I was tempted to, but they seem like the kind of people that like would get mad for self promotion. So I just haven't. Eh. When we do the plumbers don't wear ties uh, episode, just post it in there. See what happens. See what, see what, happens. See what happens. Yeah. I was more oh, shocked oh, by the. I, I found the post. So yeah, just some of the comments were like, "Guys, like it's not that serious." Yeah, it is what it is. Also, because I spelled um, I I misgrammered and put copies with a Y instead of I E S, and I got like five redditors going copies with the. Um, with the IES, and I'm just like, <laughs> go away, you freaking losers. Uh, no one cares that much. It's fun. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's coming, guys. Uh, I have things to say, so but I mean, I, I, I do too. I actually already have things to say, but I'm not saying them just yet. But yeah. I, I, let's see, it has because I, I promised I would do it. Uh, my controller was turned off. It has 21 achievements. Oh, geez. and I and I will be getting all of them. They all seem very easy to get. Like most of them are just like, oh, unlock blah blah blah. Like unlock a behind the scenes photo. And then there's like one related to the plumb the depths side game, which I haven't played yet. And then there's one that says encourage the feline to make its signature sound. 
and it's make the cat bark. And I don't know what that means yet. So <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. I will let you all know. Yeah. Uh, other than that, though, for this episode, we're actually going to not be talking about a game or the 3DO itself, kind of. It might get mentioned here or there. But um, we're actually going to be talking about a developer who was very uh, prolific on the 3DO, and that is Crystal Dynamics. Like a, a good studio, I would say. At least one of the most iconic in the later in like the more recent times. They've become more notable for their adoption of the the Tomb Raider series Mm -hmm. and really being the reason that series still exists. You know, Um, in fact, I've heard some people say when Crystal took over, that's when the series actually became good as far as like gameplay is concerned, Um, because they started, I think, with Tomb Raider Legend. Is that right? Is that the starting point? Yeah. And. People say that game holds up, so. Legend, I still think, is, like, one of the better games of that style pre, like, re second reboot, I'd say. Yeah, because I've, I've now played through the entire reboot trilogy, and I thought all three of them were really, really good. Hmm. Um, like, I think they all had something about them to make them stand out from the other. But I think overall, it was a really solid collection of action games that had a modern that took Tomb Raider and put a modern spin on it. But it still was Tomb Raider. You know, people often compare them to say to Uncharted, but I feel like they're different enough from Uncharted. Yeah, I think you know? Uncharted. I think Tomb Raider. So I've played both series. I haven't played the final Tomb Raider yet. I've only played the first two. I'll get to it eventually. But um, the way I've looked at it is the major difference i find between tomb raider and uncharted is i think uncharted has better storytelling i think tomb raider has a better gameplay direction yes um which is really interesting to me because the lead writer for the first three uncharted's was a former crystal dynamics employee so they will be they did they work oh is it they work on legacy of kane Amy Henning, yeah, she was the lead writer for uh, Legacy of Kane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she worked on the Tomb Raider reboots? Uh, not the Tomb Raider reboots. She had left, uh, I think she left shortly before they started working on Tomb Raider games because she moved over to Naughty Dog and started doing a. Oh, that's right. That's Uncharted. right. Yeah, now she has her own like studio, I think. Yeah, because she got like shuffled around a bit because she left Naughty Dog during the production of 4 to um work on that Star Wars game right before Disney pulled the plug on on uh, Lucas Arts. Yeah. Um and then she kind of was all over the place for a bit there. Yeah, looking she yeah, she was the creative director and writer of the first 3 Uncharted's. She helped out on Golden Abyss. She's credited as a writer on Battlefield Hardline of all games. And she also did the story concept for Forspoken. Oh, yeah. Good for her. Good for her. Oh, boy. Story concept. Like, what does that mean? It can mean anything. Oh, yeah. I forgot. She was a designer and artist on the uh, the classic Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Hell, yeah. yeah uh, if, only, if only that had a Sega Genesis version, I probably would have played it. Is it bad that I find that game to be slightly better than Shaq Fu, but not that much? <laughs> yeah, well. I actually have never played this game. Is it just like a 2D action platformer type game? Yeah, it's it's very... It reminds me a lot of the home improvement game, so... Looking at screenshots, yeah. Like, you could tell me it was the same dev, dev and I'd believe it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like one of those things, like, why did they make a game of this back in the day? Uh, because they had Michael Jordan's likeness. Well, yeah, because Michael Jordan's one of the biggest names in the world, so... Well, in, well, in 94, he was probably like... Yeah, the most famous athlete at that time. So true. Makes sense. I mean, he yeah, he's still a big name. Um have you ever watched his uh Hall of Fame speech when he went I've to the NBA it. Hall of Fame? Yeah. He's it an is, interesting guy. But it's surprisingly bitter. Hmm. You know, you would think a guy who for a lot of people is still considered the best to ever play the game, it's just he used that time to like air out a lot of grievances he had. And it just it it came off kind of weird. You know, that it's like, yeah. you're the biggest ever, but like, you know, you still have all these like petty things you've built up, 
you know, when it's like, this is your time to be like, fuck those. I did it. Here I am. You know, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. He's yeah. an inter- he's an interesting guy. Interesting guy. Yeah. He he rocked a Hitler stash in one of his like I forget. It was one of the many things he did commercials for, but there was a couple where he had like just this for the stash. Uh, and I was like, that's that's an interesting choice. Yeah, he's probably one of the people few people that could get away with it just because of how big he is, but Yeah, I mean I noticed it. I was just like, that's weird, you know. It's interesting because he uh he co owns a NASCAR team now. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah, they um twenty three eleven with uh, Mr. Dennis Hamlin, uh, and apparently the story is they just kind of were like, "You want to start a NASCAR team?" And he said, "Fuck it, why not?" And they started a NASCAR team. Yeah, why not? Why They're doing not? pretty good? They've won like five races. So. That's good. That's good. I feel bad. Team. I feel bad for my mom because uh, Brad Kozlowski, he's he it just seems bad luck this year, where it's like there were two races where he was like doing really well. And then a crash happened and he was out, you know? Yeah. Late tracks. It happens. But uh, yeah, so Crystal Dynamics, they've uh, they've been around longer than I thought, honestly. They're they're about as old as we are. Yeah, they um well, actually they they're was, older, they're older than us. Yeah, 31 years ago. They founded in uh 1992. Uh interestingly, they were founded by uh Madeline uh Kanifa, uh Judy Lang, and Dave Morse. And interestingly enough, um, those three were actually former 3DO employees that spun off. So this company kind of comes from 3DO in a weird way. Is it like um, they're like how Activision is to Atari? Yeah, in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. So D- uh, Dave Morse in particular, he was uh, the founder of... Uh, epics and he actually was the lead designer developer of the uh atari lynx uh, and then he later founded the studio that actually created the 3do hardware mm-hmm. um an it, interesting oh go on the atari lynx a interesting handheld surprisingly kind of underrated it's like, a really good handheld it just doesn't like, really have a lot it, of games for it well it's massive clunky hard to use though if you go through its library what it has not bad no it's, the Link- like, it's like it's pretty decent for what it is it's probably the closest thing you would get to like a portable nes at the time and i will say the Lynx 2 is much more comfortable and uh, convenient yeah and a lot of games that were on the Lynx were also i believe on the 7800 so there was quite a bit of crossover um and, I, and i've i've told that uh the version of california games on the Lynx is probably like the best version of it it's pretty um, good. And there's, oh, there's like a platformer on here that the 7800 version is garbage, like hot garbage, but the Atari Lynx version is actually really, really good. Scrapyard Dog, looking at I the I gotta list. find that one. I've been looking for yeah. it. Yeah. Y'all might know the cover. It's the, the dude has a big nose for some reason. Um, Yeah, the 7800 version, I hate it, but the Lynx version, pretty good. Hmm. Uh, interestingly enough, too, uh, uh, so th- if I'm butchering these names, I apologize. But uh, apparently, uh, Madeline Campina and uh, Judy Lang, uh, they actually worked for Sega at one point, and they were huge in the uh, the launch of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog in America. And they're often named like the mothers of Sonic. Like they were big into the whole like localization and like his whole American debut. Oh yeah, were they the ones that uh, fixed up the? Um, they they Mickey like, Mouse like- him basically. <laughs> Well, because like, wasn't it Sega Japan saying like, "Oh, he needs the band and the girlfriend and all that," and they were like, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah, I don't. They, he doesn't need all that. They also like were famous for like that Mickey Mouse looking design that he had in like the first three cover arts. <laughs> oh, because um, I believe they had Sega of America artists redraw him to give yes. him more of like an American look, which I also think was a good idea. Because yeah, it does soften him up a little bit, mm. you know, and I think okay. it it gives him more Western appeal. You know, because the Japanese style wasn't really big over here yet, you know. It, but when you get to, say, Sonic Adventure, and they have that redesign that's much more, like, anime-based, you know, it's used everywhere. Because by that point, it it made more sense. Hmm. Nah, totally. I just find it interesting, like, that how these uh, Crystal Dynamics, I didn't realize, had, like, quite the pedigree behind it when it was founded. Yeah. 
Um, and they initially were basically a first party studio for the 3DO going uh, initially. And they had a couple big names like Mark Cerny was working for them for a little while. Good old um, Mark Cerny. Yep. Name that's very well known in the industry these days. Um, oh, yeah. Mr. Another. Mac. Yep. And the fa- the father of the PS4 and 5. That's true. Um, terrible designs. Can I say that? I don't like how either console looks. I'm uh, sorry, PS- Mark. PS4 was fine to me. The 5, yeah, that that's a little busy. I mean, the PS4 just looks like one of those pink erasers that you get spray painted black. And then the PS5 looks like um, that dude from Yu-Gi-Oh! Who has like the big collar. Oh, Kaiba, Kaiba's jacket. Kaiba. Yeah, it looks like Kaiba. See the the four the that the PS4 generation I always used to say you had the uh, the trapezoid eraser, you had the uh, VCR and the Wii U looked like a fig Newton. <laughs> so made by Fisher Price. Yeah, an interesting time for consoles. Uh, uh, another big name that came from Crystal Dynamics, uh, Evan Wells. Uh, nowadays, probably better known as the C, the president of Naughty Dog. Yeah, how they're doing? The, how are they doing these days? <laughs> I mean, their games are uh, still selling massively. <laughs> yeah, I don't, but, I don't like them very much, but but like you know the still, I don't know whose idea it was to have them make uh, a live service multiplayer game. That wasn't a good idea. Shocker! It wasn't. It from what I heard, it wasn't that good. Yeah, who, who would have thought a company that doesn't make those games? Yeah, doesn't make a good one. <laughs> unfortunate. Um. Yeah, very unfortunate. Yeah, so we've already talked about Crystal's first game that they developed, and that was Crash and Burn. Not, not the greatest start. <laughs> we all get yeah, we all gotta start somewhere. Uh, they've also made a few other 3DO games. Uh, they actually didn't make as many as I thought they did. They published a few. Yes, but, um, they made Total Eclipse, which we'll be covering at some point. It uh, looks interesting. Off- it, it's not bad. Uh, they also made Offworld Interceptor, uh, another interesting looking game. That looks like it's the same engine as Total Eclipse. So all three of these, so they actually all are the Crash and Burn engine, believe it or not. That makes a lot of sense. They also apparently helped develop the 3DO version of Samurai Showdown. Yes. Yeah, my, my guess is they are probably the port team. Yeah. And then their most well-known game, uh, Slam and Jam '95. Hell yeah! <laughs> well, they published that one. It was that was developed by Left Field Productions. Yes. Um, and then, of course, their final 3D game was Gex. Oh yeah, we'll, yeah. Get, we'll get to Gex. Everybody knows Gex. They um, also published the Horde, which I thought they made for the longest time, but apparently that, it was actually Toys for Bob. Toys for Bob, our favorite new indie studio. Yeah, yeah. The, the the stories of their death were greatly exaggerated. Well, did we talk about Toys for Bob last week? I don't think we did. No, we didn't. I think we mentioned because that, that happened last week. I think. Yeah, like where it was like everyone they were like they're dead, and then all of a sudden it's like no, we're not, and it's like now we're free. Well, I didn't think they were dead. I think like people were kind of you know talking about this whole. Some people were saying like, why would Microsoft let them go? And it's like, well, I think. If, if we all remember, Microsoft basically said Activision was just going to go kind of how they were. You know, they weren't going to do much to change them up, right? Outside of letting Bobby Kotick go. Yeah, get your own um, that guy. <laughs> so, and Toys for Bob were just going to be one of those many studios at Activision that were just going to get swallowed up into helping out with like Warzone or something, right? In fact, if you go to their website, you'll see like, oh, we did Crash 4, we did the Spyro Trilogy, we also helped on Call of Duty Warzone. Like, it doesn't fit doesn't fit at all so my guess is toys for bob probably saw the writing on the wall and we're like well because they're also doing crash team rumble but i believe all that like paid content is free now or something like that so like crash team Rumble, surprisingly fun game well i think now if you want to play it now would be the time because everything's yeah. there and ready to go um but i think they saw that outside of an occasional crash game, they would just be helping out on Call of Duty. And that's not their strong suit at all. No. So so maybe they went to Microsoft saying like, hey, is there something we could do? And then Microsoft's like, well, you have to kind of go through Activision and Activision doesn't want to let you go. And 
So maybe Toys for Bob were like, hey, we just we want to do our own thing. And and credit to both of them. They let them go, which I think yeah. was good for them. But people also but also they said is um, they're entering into an agreement with Microsoft, like a partnership. So I don't know if that means Microsoft's going to just maybe later buy them as like a little separate thing, just add them to the studios or they're just going to keep them independent. I have no idea. I'm not I saying they one way or the other. Keep them independent for a bit just to like let them uh, see what they do. Cause... Yeah, because I think it would be smart to I, I well, Toys for Bob have said they want to do new IP, which I think is a great idea. Um, I think it would make sense if Microsoft's going to have them around and have like a partnership. Like, have them keep doing Crash, have them do a new Spyro game, maybe a Banjo reboot. I mean, they would be the perfect studio to bring Banjo-Kazooie back with. Yeah. Um, like, they have all this opportunity for that side that they now own a bunch of IP for, and it would look really good if Microsoft's like, yeah, we're going to fund this stuff. Even if it goes, say, like Crash 4 or like Crash 5 or Spyro 4, like starts on Xbox and goes multi-plat, it's still a good thing that it's happening because Activision isn't going to let that happen, clearly. So it would be good for the industry as a whole if they did that. And also, if they made a Banjo-Kazooie reboot, people would lose their shit. Yeah. Like, that would be huge. Like, even if it's a full-on remake of one to be, to you know, like, to be sure this is right and then do... Like a sequel to Nuts and Bolts. I, I don't know the Kazooie lore. Anyways, like have them do a more traditional Banjo Kazooie game. Like it just, it seems too perfect. So I'm just afraid it's going to get messed up because it makes too much sense. I'm going to wait, wait and see on and see what they do because Toys for Bob is like one of those, de- they're like one of those developers that like nobody knew existed for like most of their, their existence. Like, and then they made Skylanders and everyone was like, who are these guys that are going to ruin Spyro and then they fucking revived it and made it fucking what it is now. Well, they also did kind of kill Spyro with Skylanders. Yeah, and then they brought him back. Yes. They made him they, well, they did the, yeah, the trilogy of those, yeah. But that, then, yeah, they, they make games like Star Control 1 and 2, which um, I'm told are like fantastic like um, space like simulator games. Um they did the switch port of crash of the crash bandicoot trilogy um yeah they did all the skylander stuff um pandemonium good game yeah then oh yeah they did the unholy war that's right that was them yeah they're they're, crap ton of licensed games (laughs) well don't we all um so yeah they yeah they do have a interesting history but i think right now they're in a good spot Hmm. so i'm glad to see them you know be let go. You know? I'm glad they made it because I'm still buttered that we lost Vicarious. But say I, I'm still sad we don't like Raven. Raven Software is stuck. They're, they're, they're just they're, there. they're the war zone. Well, they're the war zone team now. That's what they do. Whereas like before that, they did a lot of really cool stuff. Oh yeah. And it's a shame that they're just stuck. And then there's know? the dying husk of Radical Entertainment that's still there mm-hmm. apparently. Yeah, maybe we'll get a prototype three. Yeah, I doubt it. But uh, yeah, Crystal. Ironically, Crystal made a lot of sequels to games that they didn't create. Like um, they made Pandemonium 2. Uh, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, which was a good game, but it was also like weirdly edgy for no reason. They made the characters like extra sexy for no reason. Which the I was nine, like the 90s, I, I guess, guess. <laughs> probably. Um. And their most famous publishing game that they did not make, despite uh, common belief, is Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. That is true. Yeah, they didn't make that one. No, that was made by Silicon Knights before that studio went insane. Um, but then but then they started making the Soul Reaver yeah, ones, they, which I think people tend to like more anyways. So... Blood Omen Legacy of Cain is a, an interesting Zelda top-down Zelda clone um, yeah. with vampires. That's It's not bad, but it's very uh, by the numbers, I guess you could say nowadays. It had some interesting story stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, Crystal Dynamics basically just kind of like stole that series. And they're like, this is ours now. Um, and, the, and then they just kind of ripped off Tomb Raider, but made it Soul Reaver. 
Legacy of Kane. Ar- arguably, they made it better. Arguably, yeah. Um, because I still say Legacy uh, Soul Reaver is one of the most impressively programmed games I've ever played. Yeah, for, especially for that era. especially the Dreamcast version. That's the version I played. It has no load times. It's it's really impressive. It's it's Very like a Jack and Daxter one. Not mm-hmm. not as seamless as Jack and Daxter one because like you do notice. Wow, this hallway is very long for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was sort of their bread and butter for a little bit. Also mixing in like, you know, Walt Disney World Magical Racing Tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or uh, Mad Dash Racing for the Xbox. Yeah, they Crystal made some weird games back in the day, which I oh, find yeah. really interesting. Whiplash. Um, I, what the hell is this? Oh, Whip, Whiplash does not get enough love. The hell uh, Whip, is this thing? So Whiplash, ironically, the they made it after the Legacy of Kane series ended, which is really weird to me. Um, so Whiplash, believe it or not, I believe from what I've read, this is the Gex team, and this is what they did after Gex. Huh. Why didn't they it's, just make it Gex? I'm assuming because Gex is dated and they don't know what to do with Gex anymore. But like the last Gex game they made was in '99. At that point, it was a deep cover Gecko. Yeah, I I don't know honestly. It's never really been explained. Uh, Whiplash. Whiplash is a 3D platformer though, and it is insanity. It looks um, insanity. It was actually uh It was uh, criticized and had controversy because the game was apparently uh, considered. Uh, it promoted cruelty to animals despite being cartoons. <laughs> well, it's, I, I think a lot of video games promote cruelty to animals without us realizing it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it was just part of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whiplash is a really fun 3d platformer though. Maybe, maybe I'll check it out. And, um, oh yeah. They also did project Snowblind, which is that game. That yeah, was their I, last original game. Whenever I would go to like the rental store, or even these days when I go into a retro store, I always see a copy of this game. I've never played it. I know nothing about it. I just know pro- whenever I see Project Snowblind, my first thought is, oh, that's a that's a snowboarding game. Because it was like in the era of SSX. And nope, it's just a first person shooter. And my guess is that's exactly what it is. So just apparently. Per- oh, it's on Steam. Oh. For six dollars, no a thank steal. you. Um, <laughs> what a steal! Yeah, there's a couple 3DO games on a uh, Steam. Not that many though. But there's a few. So apparently, Project Snowblind was originally began development as a uh, part of the Deus Ex series, and then oh, I guess they kind of it just evolved into its own thing, but it still kind of retains some Deus Ex elements. It it looks nothing like Deus Ex to me. Yeah, that's probably why it changed into its own thing. Yeah, and then and then that's when they adopted the Tomb Raider series. Is that is that the correct uh, word to say? It was more like their parent. They, it was taken away from its parent, and they just kind of were like, "Here, watch this now." <laughs> Somebody else needs to look after this. It's like, well, because Angel, it's parents Angel killed Dark- it. Well, because Angel Darkness is bad. It's like it's like look what this so look what bad. the parents did. <laughs> look what they did basically. they called child they called child services on them being like hey can you save them yeah and, um, then, and then they only made two games after angel of darkness core design smart bomb and free running for the psp yep and they're apparently both average and yeah though though they did make uh one of the craziest games i've ever seen in my entire life for the ps2 uh, 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 Gurdy. yes because a buddy of mine Back in the day on his PS2, that was the game he had for it. I, I forget the story of how he got it. I think it was just like his stepmom just like saw it and was like, oh, he'll play this. And he played a shit ton of it. And I've been meaning to play it just because I it, it looks so ridiculous. Mm. And it, I've and never it, if you, if you it. well, look at that cover. You've seen that cover, right? Yeah, because I always used to mix it up with uh, Oak Age, the uh, the the it's another PS2 game that's like an RPG that's completely not related in the slightest, but it has a similar cover. Yeah, this is like a weird like strategy game or something. Like I don't know how to describe it. 
it is it is wacky. It is wacky. I, I may I may end up playing this in the future and talking about it. So we we shall see. But it looks fucking weird, dude. I will say, um, Tomb Raider Legend, their first Tomb Raider. That is like by far my favorite like version of like Laura Croft's like design was. Oh, Tomb Raider Legend. Yeah. Well, because she's, she's not still- ultra realistic, but she's also not like Tomb Raider one like stupid looking like levels. It, it it looks like they found like a middle ground of like her looking a little bit more realistic while still retaining what people liked, which is boobs. <laughs> I I mean they're not like she her she doesn't have a model that doesn't make sense. That's that's what I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And it's weird that some people would claim that like the the newer Tomb Raiders like th- I mean yes, they toned down the Laura Croft sex appeal, but like I don't know, it's still kind of there, but it's just not the main focal point anymore, which to me says, oh, the games are good because they don't they don't need the TNA to sell it. They could just be like, oh, just play this game. This is a fun game. And it is. And I'm sure the Legends game, the like Legend Anniversary, I'm sure those games are good, too. So what what I've been meaning to, what since I finished the new Tomb Raider trilogy, I'll probably go back and play these because I am curious to them. And people still talk very highly of Legend. Legend is a really good game. Anniversary, it's good. Um, I just don't think Tomb Raider 1 is that good of a game, personally. Mm -hmm. But Anniversary is like a full-on remake of it. Yeah, it's a good good game. I just feel like it's... So an interesting thing about uh, Tomb Raider Legend, actually, that I found out was uh, they actually brought Laura Croft's uh, original creator in as a... uh, one of the the main writers for the game, uh, Toby Gard which is partially why it kind of like revived the series roots in a way. Yeah. It was probably a good idea to do that. Well, cause to- I believe Toby guard left after the first or second game. Cause he did not like the direction that the uh, core was taking it. That's fair. And then I think it's underworld, which was the sequel to this one was being done at like the same time as anniversary. Yeah. Um, underworld is interesting. Cause it was the PS, uh, the next gen one and there's like evil Laura Croft in it like it's like a shadow Laura Croft at one point yeah but wait they all were PS3 360 was well uh I believe a uh, legend was part of um the H it had like an HD port yeah well uh, according to Wikipedia legend was released on the Game Boy Advance which I need to find that copy the GameCube, PC, the DS, PS2, PS3, PSP, Xbox, and Xbox 360. So and PS- most of those were released at that time. The PS3 version is what came out in 2011, super late. But all the others came out in 2006. Yeah, the PS3 version was part of the HD collection, which had... um, It was a Legend, Anniversary, and Underworld in one convenient pack. Gotcha, gotcha. Because, yeah, I know this was like that time where like the 360 was new it was yeah, brand and new it, and a lot of games that were made for like ps2 or og xbox were probably just like hd'd like real quick and then just kind of thrown on the 360 yeah because if you if you play legend um and anniversary and you look at the uh, graphics you can tell right away that this is a ps2 game yeah it, it's the it's like oh it's an hd so it looks a little cleaner but the um the assets aren't really hd so. That's actually funny because they later re-released it in the HD collection on 360 again, despite all those games having standalone 360 releases. Yeah. In fact, I, I have Legend in here because I think I bought it for like $3 or something. It was like dirt cheap. So I figured it was a no-brainer because I've heard people say good things about it. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh, yeah, it's so. got great, great story. I actually yeah. got all the Tomb Raider games up until like uh, the the 2013 reboot um in a steam sale for five dollars <laughs> like everything yeah. from Tomb Raider one to 2013 did you get the two laura croft like shooter things i don't think those were included i think it was just the main series games okay i haven't played these like i'm not even so, quite sure what they are they are okay they're interesting actually um i, I, Gar- I have guardian of, of light and temple of osiris so they're, what's funny about those is those are part of the legend canon. <laughs> like okay. Even though the reboot happened, they're still technically like the old canon. It's a weird, 
Yeah, thing. it's weird. Yeah, I know these both came out on Switch. I think it was last year because I had heard a rumor that like some Tomb Raider games were coming to Switch, and some people were like, "Well, they're not going to get 2013 on there, would they?" I mean, even though 2013 was on the 360. Uh, the Switch ne- could run 2013. That's probably it. Well, Rise was 360 as well. That's true. Well, that's that's like porting somehow wizardry. wizardry. That that was port wizardry, absolutely. But even then, it's just like Tomb Raider 2013 on Switch would be weird. And it's like they could have just like did say Legend. And I think people would have been like, well, "That's a weird old game," but sure. Oh, people would have th- ate that up because Legend is so yeah. popular. Yeah, but I think the Laura Croft spinoffs were probably like a good compromise because, like, the first one is like, like it was released on like Android and like phones and shit. So and then got a PS4 physical port for no reason. Was that one of those like discless promo like uh, physical games? You know, I know ne- I, I where never where it's it, like so. it had a plastic case, but you opened it up and there's just nothing in there but a download code, and that was like brand new. Because some okay, companies maybe. are like, oh, they just want the plastic case on their shelf. When it's like, no, we actually want the game in, in the plastic case, guys. That doesn't happen that much anymore. But for a little bit, that was a thing. I remember. The the Vita version of Minecraft was legit an empty case. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense to me. Like, just don't bot. Like, you're going to go through all that trouble of printing cases and all that. Like, you might as well just print a fucking Vita card at that point. Like you're already yeah. you're already making the effort. It's weird, but yeah. Anyway, these games what are they like twin stick shooters or something? Yeah, they're like top down action adventure kind of games. They're they're just they're little mini like adventure kind of things. They they're mm-hmm. completely harmless, but not required in any means. They look cool. I probably I'd probably play them. Like I imagine with Tomb Raider, I'd probably play outside of the. Some people call it the Survivor trilogy. Which I mean, I guess, sure. Um, either that or like the reboot trilogy. Outside of that, I'll probably play through like Legend, Anniversary, Underworld. I might check these two out. But like the uh, early game, the early games, I, I might avoid. One and two are worth playing. Two in particular. Um, well, there is one through three remastered, which that's if probably that, if the that, way to go. If that's ever like ten bucks, I'll probably I'll probably snag it. You know, and then get mad that they put a little bumper at the front that said oh these games are old so they might have some problematic shit sorry which is funny i say that because plumbers don't wear ties has the exact same thing they even use the word problematic (laughs) of course it does which oh yeah yeah you saw it well it's in the definitive edition they have like look it's basically like look this game was made the 90s so there might be some (laughs) stuff in here that's kind of not cool anymore just letting you know which i I, it's fine that they said that sure yeah there's no um, problem with that but but at the same time the people playing this game know what it is oh yeah if you're playing so you know ties, you should know in advance but yeah you know it, they're just... in fact in fact before you even start the game like a pre plumbers don't wear ties definitive edition review before you even start the main game it says oh there's this like little video do you want to watch it beforehand and you go, yeah, sure, why not? And it's just like a six minute video of them being like, why, why did we do this? We're not sure. Maybe, maybe you'll tell us. Well, their main argument is that if we're going to be pro game preservation, then we need to preserve the bad stuff as well as the good stuff, which I agree with. I think everything should be preserved, no matter how good or bad it is. Plumbers don't wear ties. Last point on plumbers don't wear ties before the actual episode. That is a game that needs to be remembered just to showcase this is not how you make video game. I mean, if somebody tried to make a video game like that nowadays, either that's what they're going for or yeah, they have just no idea what they're doing and they should, they should choose another career. I'm honestly surprised we haven't got an indie game that kind of parodied the style. Yeah. uh, Like an ironic one or something. It's probably for the best. I mean, we could probably do it, but no, no, I don't. I don't think we know any women who'd be willing to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, we can't hire a, a local wrestler. I mean, we probably could, but you know, I don't know. I'm sure, there's one. On, I'm sure there's one on Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> Though, no, if we were going to use a lady wrestler, I think like 
a Chelsea Green would be good for this, if you know who that is. I don't know how yeah. much you know your wrestling lore, but I don't know the lore. I know some of the names though. Okay. She she would be a good fit for this. But in any case. But in any case, yeah, Crystal Dynamics. Yeah, they do Tomb Raider now. Um and, and, a, they, a really and they've done a good job game. with it. Well, the Marvel game, the Avengers game, I don't think was their fault. No, I it wasn't. I it haven't was... played it. I have no idea. I think it was on Game Pass for a while. It might still be on Game Pass. Maybe I should try it. Let let me know, audience, if I should try out Marvel's The Avengers. Sure, if it's on Game Pass, I'll give it a whirl. Um, from what people told me, the first half is like a standard kind of action adventure game, what you expect, and it's pretty okay. But then somewhere around the halfway point is where they introduce all that live service crap that just tanks the game. Yep. And from what I know and from what some other people have implied, that was Square because Crystal was owned by Square for a while um, in, in like pushing for them to do live service stuff. And they're like, well, we're already like halfway through the game, you know, so it it seems forced from what I'm told. It was like very forced in there. It sounds really, a lot like uh, Suicide Squad in a way. Well, I think Suicide Squad, I, I don't know anything about that game at all other than it looks bad. From what I've heard, it was made to be a live service game from the start. And it was just yeah. kind of put in there. But again, much like with the Naughty Dog thing, why would you have a studio known for making great single player games do this with like Rocksteady? And I'm worried for Rocksteady now. I think they're dead in the water, especially because all the people that made Rocksteady great like left. Like, I feel they should get one more chance to, like, make a game that people know Rocksteady for. Like, maybe not another Batman. I don't know if we could do another Arkham game. I don't, I, I don't know, because I still haven't played Night yet, so I don't oh, know I, how... So does Night is... kind of end everything? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Uh, so, that I mean, they could do, like, the Superman game, because they said they wanted to do one. And, I mean, maybe they could pull it off. I know Superman games are notoriously not good. But I feel like Rocksteady could maybe make it work. I don't know. Um, but I feel like Rocksteady should get another chance. You know, they shouldn't die because they were kind of forced to make this live service game for WB. And then WB is upset that it didn't do well when it's like, well, you guys kind of made them do it. And it's that's not what they do. You know, that's like if you got NetherRealm to make like a first person shooter and then got mad at them for it not doing well. Like, what do you expect? That's not what they do. Yeah. I think NetherRealm is mostly safe just because Ed Boon is very protective. Well, and Mortal Kombat is like a big name in the gaming, and it always sells really well. And it being a fighting game, you can do like DLC and like kind of quasi live service into it, and people buy into it. So Mortal Kombat is a cash cow. Hmm. You know, it's a steady one for Warner Brothers, so they don't have to worry about it. You know, and yes, Ed Boon does have a lot of clout as well. You know, the, yeah. we need that Shaolin Monks remaster. God damn it. I know. I, I need it so bad. You've that is idea. such an un. that is such a like it. That game shouldn't be as good as it is. But it, oh, my God, it's so good. No, it's great. It deserves to be that great, especially when they tried to make other sort of action adventure Mortal Kombat games and they were terrible. Well, yeah, it's the previous two attempts at that were Sub-Zero and Special Forces and Sub-Zero has amazing cutscenes. <laughs> But the game is yeah. bad to it is shit. So and bad. And then special, special forces is bad just in general. Yeah. And and special forces was so bad. The co-creator John Tobias left. Yep. But then I think it was right after that. They did deadly Alliance. Yeah. And, then and everything Tobias, was back to normal. And then Tobias formed his own company and they made crap. What games did they make? They made Hold that, on. They made not Mortal Kombat basically. <laughs> well, that doesn't say much. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me pull up. What, what was the name of the studio he formed? Studio Gigante. That's right. They they made that one fighter that was like exclusively on Xbox, and it was literally just Mortal Kombat, but not but not Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Tao Fang, Fist of the Lotus. Uh, yep. Yeah, I and then and then they did WrestleMania 21 for the Xbox, which if it wasn't so buggy, it would actually be kind of okay. But that game is abysmal just because, like, the core of it is so bad. Tao, Tao Fang wasn't a bad fighter. It was just when you played it, you really realized how much Ed Boon actually had in that series. 
Well, Tobias was the artist. He did all the yes. art. And Ed Boon was the programmer. He he was the John Carmack, and Tobias was the John Romero, basically. Yeah. So when you let the programmer, if you still have the guy who's chonking away at everything, getting it just right, you know, you can change the artist around, you know, and you'll but you'll still have the same core game in there from a programming standpoint. Yeah. So and Tobias didn't have that. I thought he was involved in what was that like Xbox fighter that was a bunch of like like chibi like ninjas and shit. I can't remember what it was called. You you probably know it. I know it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Kung Fu Chaos. Is that what it was called? I think so. I thought he was involved in that as well. I could be wrong on that. Now that was uh just add mon just add monsters. Who the hell is that? <laughs> just add that's a team right there. Um Ninja it was Ninja Theory. What? Oh. Like I I I I click on there just add monsters. It takes me to Ninja Theory. They were called Just Add Monsters from 2000 to 2004 and then they changed their name for a uh, Heavenly Sword. So the only oh. game they did as um Just Add Monsters was Kung Fu Chaos, which I remember from the Xbox demo kiosks and liking it, but I've never played it beyond that. Yeah, and then and then they changed their name to Ninja Theory and then did Heavenly Sword and I made Goddess of War. <laughs> Basically, and in Enslaved Odyssey to the West, I really want to play that game. It looks cool. Um, DMC is in the the backlog. They're the reboot that they did. I've heard good things. It, it's um, a fine game. The story is garbage. That's basically I, it. I feel like since I haven't played any of the Devil May Cries, this is like this is how I should play the reboot. Just put by itself as its own thing, and yeah. then go back and play the series. So then I have you know two to separate ideas of it you know what i mean the, the way i i view dmc is like it is literally like imagine if like you took had like someone else make a devil may cry and they just tried so they basically they it was like uber try hard like that's how bad like the story is yeah because doesn't like isn't there the the famous scene is that like he has on like oh like a white wig and then oh, he yeah, just, he, and then he pulls it off he's like oh i look stupid no, no, it, it's even more of a slap in the face. It's literally, he has a white wig on and he looks at the camera and just goes, not in a million years. <laughs> That's and funny, like, though. I like that. Well, it's funnier in, in context, because a little mini spoiler, but at the end of the game, he gets, uh, his hair ends up turning white. <laughs> so, ah, okay. Interesting. So it's a little bit of a foreshadowing uh, kind yeah. of thing. But it, 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 yeah. at the time, because fans, the Devil May Cry fans weren't happy with that reboot from the start. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it, it's and from what people have told me, they didn't give it a fair chance because the gameplay is really good. Oh yeah, the game itself is fine, it, very stylistic. The style, the style that game has is very nice, and the side characters that they add, like the original side characters, are actually pretty good. Cool. That's good. Um, I I will be playing that this year at some point because I was gifted it in a Secret Santa, so I feel obligated to play it now. And I, it's the definitive edition, which I think which they is, said just just play that one. Yeah, it's perfectly the way to play it. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. A Ninja Theory worked on Disney Infinity as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, along with uh, Avalanche and Heavy Iron, like oh, all these studios, I like Heavy Iron. Oh, heavy I love Iron. Heavy. I love Heavy Iron so goddamn much. It's a shame that they're in such a weird spot now. Like I don't know what the deal is with them anymore. Like they're owned by just some some weird thing called keyword keyword studios. So they just kind of do like Pac-Man mega tunnel battle for stadia or and fat city, whatever that what is. What the hell is a fat city? Apparently it's really means. good. Apparently it's really good. I don't even know what that is. I, I, I need, I need to find out what this game is, but, but yeah, but you know, heavy iron famous for a uh, battle for bikini bottom. Uh, Scooby Doo Night of Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. That's a really cool game. The the two Incredibles games from that era, which I have a soft spot for them. Pretty much every Pixar movie tie in from that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and then they did Family Guy Back to the Multiverse, which is not a good game. No, and then some uh, weird fitness game. <laughs> UFC Personal Trainer. And then and now they're cr and and then for a while they were helping out on like Call of Duty games. Um, like they're credited, they they're credited on Black Ops Cold War. Um, they're credited on Crash Four. Apparently, um, huh. they did they did the Grand Tour game. 
good that's for them. Your, oh awesome. no. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. And, oh yeah, and they were going to do uh Toy Story 3, but the version Avalanche did became the version of Toy Story 3 instead. Which to be fair, Avalanche's version probably was better. Oh yeah, that game is amazing. I love that game to death. And and Avalanche is also a really good studio in their own right. They are. Um, they got killed off and then Warner Brothers came in and said, no, not today. We're going to keep you around. <laughs> do you want to do Disney Infinity? Or I think, wasn't Disney Infinity their idea? Yeah, and then the, the Disney killed it off and just killed them with it and Warner Brothers was yeah. like, no, 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 we'll, we'll take that. They're, they're good. And you're they're the big. racing, well, you're the racing guy. So like, are the Cars games they made any good? Cars, Cars 2, 2 is better 3? than the movie and Cars 3 is just the Cars 2 game, but better. So is it just like an open world racing game or what is it? It's a kart racer. It's a really good one. Okay. Because I, I see it all the time and people are like, no, it's good. I'm like the okay. general. So the joke with cars, the joke with the cars two game is like, wow, the game is better than the movie. Okay. Yeah. And then they did Hogwarts legacy, which you know, not the, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you like it, play it. Yeah. I mean, I don't hey, know. It's it. it's not their fault, okay? No, like, no. I I was the the strong person who was like, "Hey, Avalanche didn't do any of that shit. Leave them alone. Yeah. You don't have to hurt yeah. them." Yeah, like like if you're angry at J.K. Rowling for the things she has said, as I am, direct your anger at her. I'm not going to direct it at Avalanche when, especially during the PR for Hogwarts Legacy, they were trying so hard to be like. We're not that. We swear to God, we're well, not that. They're, they're definitely not because they put. They actually legit put a uh, a trans character in the game. That's basically a yeah. giant middle, middle finger and, to J.K. Rowling. Yeah, and I think I think there are some trans people on the dev team as well. So yeah, there, so, there's yeah. legit one of the NP, NPCs that you can find is a is a trans character, and, and yeah. she's basically just one giant middle finger to J.K. Rowling. It's great. D does J.K. know about it? No, she doesn't give a shit. She got her cash already. Yeah. I, I, I doubt she gets residuals from that game, but I, I doubt it. I don't know. I mean, she she's rolling in dough. She's fine. she probably signed off on it, said sure, and then took a nap in her pile of money. Yeah. I, I, Hogwarts Legacy. Did you play it? Uh, I played the demo. Of it. I'm not a Harry Potter guy, so I wasn't really super okay. interested in it. I, I played a bit just to see and it. Look, it it's fine. Yeah, I'm not a Harry Potter person either, Um, but I know like the people who are into that stuff like it. So. Matt was telling me his uh, wife is really big into it, so yeah. works for me. So That's a good sign. I mean, hey, <laughs> if they got a good game, good for them. Yeah, and then uh, what are they doing next? I thought they had announced that they were doing something else. I forget. But but any man, anyways, man, quite. The... It's funny how Crystal leads to so many other different studios because there was yeah. like a weird smorgasbord of like game studios from that era. Yeah, because I, I yeah, because with Ninja Theory, I forgot to mention they did Hellblade, um, and I love Hellblade One, love it to death, and I'm very very excited for Hellblade Two. That's probably like one of my most anticipated games of the year, so I'm I'm fascinated to what it's going to be. Like I know some people are, I guess, worried about it as far as like when they said it was going to be like oh like a six to eight hour game in that dev direct, and people got mad, and I'm like. Did you guys play Hellblade One? Like, I I think hundred percent of that game took me seven hours, and that's and that's perfect for what it is. It doesn't need to be like a fifteen hour adventure. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not meant to be that. So if Hellblade Two is just Hellblade One again, but a lot prettier, and hopefully some refine refinements in the gameplay, and maybe like an extra hour, hour and a half, perfect perfect that's all it needs to be it's really funny i, I just kind of had this thought about uh crystal dynamics they literally mm -hmm. went from making games about geckos to vampires to raiding tombs yeah and it's funny i mentioned the whole ninja theory thing with xbox when people have been saying for a while that uh, xbox is going to buy crystal which i mean they might it's it, all it, it depends if Embracer wants to let them go. Well, I feel like I mean Embracer's kind of on fire right now and <laughs> Crystal and Idos need to be saved. If there's any I don't know the entire Embracer umbrella, but if there are it's two studios shockingly if, large. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure if I looked at it I would be amazed. But if 
if we could save Crystal and Eidos, I would be fine. And I don't think anybody would get mad if Microsoft's like, yeah, we just scoop those two up because they're already working on stuff for them anyways. Like yeah. Crystal's, Doing as far the- as I know, Crystal is working on the Perfect Dark reboot with the and initiative. Another, and another team, Tomb Raider. A Tomb Raider, which is them trying to put all bridge all the story timelines together into one or something. Like they're trying to, what, like Spider-Man it, where it's like it's all connected. That'll be That'll be curious to see. And I need to catch up so I can have some context for when I get there. Um, so we'll see about that. Um, and yeah, and I'm curious to what their perfect dark reboot, the perfect dark reboot's gonna be. Mm. Um, because I mean, they announced that one in 2020, and we still haven't heard a thing about it. Yeah, they've been oddly quiet. Well, I know the initiative has had problems. Did you know? Did you know that Embracer owns limited run games? Yeah, I knew that. All right, I did not know that. They also own Dark Horse Comics. <laughs> Don't Dark Horse? Why? They, they own Dark Horse Comics, apparently. Jesus Christ! When did they buy all this shit? Like, I'm reading through. I this think it was during the. Year. I think it was during the pandemic. I guess they own Gearbox. I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew they knew. I knew they owned Gearbox, and honestly, I, I thought I heard a rumor that Gearbox was trying to go independent. It wouldn't surprise me. They should. They should. Gearbox needs to be. Leave them alone. <laughs> Let them be free. They deserve to be. I like how they basically just took the dead THQ name just to have. A, just oh, THQ to Nordic. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because Nordic Games was a dumb. Oh, <laughs> oh, and say, oh, Saber's their own thing now. They went independent. Okay, like they, they like they got some private investors and uh, bought themselves out of Embracer. So Saber's on their own now. Good. And accord and according to Saber, because now that they're independents, the the Knights of the Old Republic re- remake is back on, because nice. it was gifted to them after Aspire. Because who thought, who who was like, oh, Aspire should remake Kotor? No, they port Kotor. They either no remaking it, give it to Saber. Saber could do it. So also apparently, I didn't even realize this. Apparently, they brought back Free Radical Design and then proceeded yes. to just kill it, kill them off. Yeah, yeah, which doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. Which means Time Splitters 4 is never happening. We just nope. have to accept it. Yep. Oh, they are. They own Deep Silver. Um, they killed... Vol- well, I don't think they killed Volition. I think Volition killed themselves. Yeah, Volition killed themselves. 1,000%. So sad, because they still made one of the greatest video games ever made. Yeah. Red Faction what? Gorilla. Oh, I thought you were about to say the Saints Row reboot. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> You want to talk uh, about oh, yeah, trying? Oh, yeah, they own a, yeah, they own a Middle Earth Enterprises. Purple um, Lamp Studios, my boys. Purple Lamp's good. They Purple made Lamp. a great SpongeBob remake, and then they made it was so successful they just made another SpongeBob game because fucking yeah. why not? Oh yeah, and they're doing the uh, the epic re- uh, the epic Mickey re- remake. Oh yeah, rebrushed. Yeah, I'm, I'm which forward to that honestly. Not at sixty bucks though. Well, no, I, I'll wait till it drops in price inevitably. I, I do want to play that, though, because I played it on Wii way back in the day and was kind of eh on it. Like, the game doesn't look good, and even these days, trying to play it like on this nice TV, it still doesn't look all that great. That um, was a game that Disney hyped the fuck out of, and then it came oh, yeah. out. It was kind of like, it's fine. I think the problem is they realize that if they're limiting themselves to the Wii they had to limit their ambition as well. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened. I don't even know who made Epic Mickey. Junction Point Uh, Studios and Warren Spector of all fucking people. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. You know, the Deus Ex guy. Yeah. The Deus Ex guy made Epic Mickey. What the hell? Yeah, Junction Point made two games, like Epic Mickey and Epic Mickey 2, and then they went out of business. Well, they were going to do a Half-Life 2 episode, apparently. Maybe they know how to count to three. Maybe. And then they were working on a game called Sleeping Giants, um, which probably is not based on the 1972 Jazz Fusion album by Herbie Hancock and his Moandishi band. It was probably, probably something completely <laughs> different. Though a game based on that would be awesome. In fact, I don't think I have a vinyl copy of that, no. But I do have the CD copy. If you get a chance, look at the the, the album artwork for that. Really cool. Really cool painting. But yeah, yeah, the Epic Mickey remake looks interesting. I need to see more of it, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a very hit or miss game. So I'm hoping that they yeah. fix the hit or miss nature of it. But I think it's one of those games we're all willing to give it another chance. Yeah. Because no, the, the first one was good. It just wasn't perfect. Yeah. But it's like, you know what? Let's it, it's one of those. Let's see what happens. You know, like I, I'm not against it. Not That's against like it. how I feel about the Alone in the Dark remake, where I'm kind of like, you know, I like what I'm seeing, even though there's not a lot to see. Isn't that out now? I don't think it ever came out. If it did, I completely missed it. Oh, uh, let's alone in the dark. I played the the like the ten minute demo. That's just like the little girl walking around, which just made you go, "Hey, we're we're copying the Resident Evil remake style," which is the smart which thing is fine. to do. Which is smart, fine. the smart thing to do. Uh, let's see, it's coming out the twentieth of March, so, so very couple, soon. A couple weeks. Yes, and I I am not intending to play it. I'm going to just because I have a weird soft spot for that series. But um, well, if it's good, let me know and maybe we'll do a special episode. Yeah, as like a follow up. I mean, we we still need to do a road redemption. So yeah, I uh, mean that'll come. We later. did we did basically say Alone in the Dark is one of those games that's like it was important in its time, but you don't need to play it anymore. Yeah, but it'd be interesting to to tackle a brand new game. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, as, as you said, yeah, Crystal just cre yeah creates this like weird web of like all these developers that make all this like weird stuff, you know. But it, it it's like devs that we know as like the the weirdos, you know. Whereas like normies are like, who the hell are you talking about? Yeah, but it's, it's fun to dig through all this shit, you know. I I'm still amazed. Like I didn't realize Crystal really did not make anything else but Tomb Raider after Legend. Yeah, that's all really. Well, they did Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, that was like the first thing. Yeah, yeah, and they're working on that Perfect Dark reboot. And then, as I've, I was trying to mention, I think I got lost in it. Eidos is uh, helping out. Um, I'm on the Fable reboots. Crap, I forget the studio is making that. The Forza Horizon the Forza team. Guys. Forza Horizon. Oh crap! Playground, playground. That's right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Fable reboot. It looks really interesting. Um, hopefully. When we get the June showcase, maybe we'll get a little bit more, like maybe some gameplay. I'd like to I'd like to see it. So, but I I I I trust Fables in good hands because Playground are really good. The Horizon games are fantastic, and you know they are British devs, and I I, I get the sense they will keep that same level of humor and silliness that the Fables as long games as are they, known for. As long as they don't do a Peter Molyneux and just like overpromise everything and. <laughs> just make a, a good game i they don't think fine. yeah i don't think playground would do that and plus they have yeah. idos there to probably help them out with like the the action rpg stuff because they've never yeah. really made a game like that like they know how to make a big world with a lot of stuff to do because the rising games are massive so yeah. they know how to do that meanwhile so, idos montreal knows how to make uh action rpgs very well yeah so, so it, it, i mean it could end up being a banger like a fantastic game so and I hope you get so. me to actually buy an Xbox just to play it. So hey, there you go. Because I really do like Fable 2. I need to play that. But yeah, so Crystal, I'm not really worried about them. Uh, I think they're fine. I don't see them closing anytime soon. Hopefully. I mean, with Embracer kind of not in a good spot, who knows what's going to happen. But I think with Crystal, they have so many they're doing so much stuff right now. Like, yeah, they are helping out in perfect dark. They are making a new tomb Raider game. Um, and those are, you know, IP that people know and care about. And I think the Microsoft association helps them as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if say shit hit the fan and then Microsoft had to come in and swoop, swoop them up to be like, it's, it's either we buy them or let them die. And we're, we're yeah. bringing them in. And, and I think everyone would be like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, by then. I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, well, I mean, people already don't give a shit about Microsoft buying stuff anymore. It, especially if they're going to make more stuff multi-plat. It's like, yeah, I feel like at that, that point, who the fuck cares? I think that was the uh, the key that they used to get everyone off their back right there. Yeah, I don't and I don't think everything's going to go multi-plat. Like, I no. imagine, like, Halo, Gears, Forza, Fable... Uh, sunset overdrive um well they don't even own that anymore technically yeah but like 
certain things they'll leave they'll leave on here because I feel like they should. And I wouldn't be surprised if they considered like Halo and Gears, but then they probably went, well, we need like those those franchises are so iconic to our brand. They need to stay here. Like I think just, they're more going to They need some. Like, it's yeah, like Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, the smaller stuff. The which rare I think game. is Sea of Thieves I'm very interested in. Like Yeah, that would like be fun. And apparently it does have crossplay. I looked it oh, up. Thank God. So I can't would, wait for the that, day that crossplay becomes standard. Yeah. I mean, hey, we might we could do some Sea of Thieves crossplay. I think that would be fun. It'd give me a reason to actually play it. Because I've yeah. been looking for a reason to play it. I've heard it's good. Like I've heard it's oh, like yeah. rare fine. It's like it it's like old rare again. So. Yeah. And I don't think rare replay will ever cross over. Um, no, I don't see that going anywhere. Especially when the main audience is like Nintendo fans. And it's better to just like drip feed them into the NSO subscription, you know? Yeah. Cause that's what they know. Yeah. So honestly. that's probably the smarter thing to do. And then if you just want the whole hit, the whole <laughs> at right now, it's right here on the Xbox. So you're good to go. Yeah. Most so. Sony fans aren't even really clamoring for those. No. Games, so. I, don't, I don't think Sony fans necessarily care about Banjo Kazooie. No. The only thing Sony fans are really, <laughs> probably upset about is crash and spyro that's really about it yeah but i imagine crash and spyro aren't going yeah i I, I imagine they will they'll probably i imagine what most xbox exclusives that go multi-plat they'll be on here for like maybe 12 to 18 months maybe 24 max and then move them over that's probably what they'll do and i think that's fair you know and then stuff like, you know, say Call of Duty, it's like, well, it's coming to, to Game Pass, you know. We'll, we'll see yeah. if that moves the needle. I doubt it will move the needle much. But, eh, who knows? Not a big deal. I, I think as long as we still have the big three, we'll be fine. Because yeah. if we it, losing any one of those three would be bad. Honestly, be yeah. And there's not like a, a, a competitor coming in to replace one of them. No, like I, I've always felt that if we had Sega and we had the four, the industry yeah. would actually be healthier. But unfortunately, Sega was too. Th- they the did it to themselves. They did it yeah. to themselves. So, what can you do? Yeah, but yeah, I like Crystal. They're they're a really good uh, dev team, and um, the the games I've played from them, I've really enjoyed. Mm. Um, I really liked the Tomb Raider reboot series. I thought they did a good job with those. Um, I don't get the hate for Shadow. I think Shadow was really good. It's not as combat focused as Rise and uh, 2013. It's a bit more puzzle oriented, but it's kind of what I liked about it. And the game's absolutely yeah. gorgeous because it's the only one that's um, optimized for this for the Series X and PS5. So the game looks phenomenal. Um, and yeah, they're good. And I, I think Crystal are a good dev that have earned their pedigree as well. Yeah. And, and they have some weird stuff. Like in the past, and then they had like their like Soul Reaver era, and now they're like deep in their Tomb Raider era, and they might start doing bigger AAA stuff as well. Like if I imagine if Perfect Dark hits really well, that that could be a catalyst for them doing more stuff of that size. Yeah, honestly, Crystal, I think it, Crystal is probably the other the other big legacy that the 3DO kind of left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Where where's the new where's the new Gex? Where's the AAA Gex game? <laughs> They've teased that so many times lately and it's like I think at this point they're just trolling us. I think they could do it. The, I think they I mean it's it I don't think it'd be that hard to make. I'd actually kind of I, I I know the popularity this wouldn't probably be as popular but I'd actually kind of like another 2D Gex. It wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't know if I don't know if Crystal would want to do that. I feel like if they were to make like a 3D platformer or hell, Toys for Bob is independent. Maybe Crystal goes to Toys for Bob and says, hey, guys, do you want to do a 3D uh, Gex game? I'd play that. I I'd trust Toys for Bob. I'd play a new Gex. I'm just curious how they would do Gex's like humor. Like, would he they try pop culture references again or would he just become a fucking meme? <laughs> Like meme slinger. I mean, pop culture references these days are memes. Yeah, it's pop I'm just, culture, man. <laughs> I'm just imagining him slinging memes, like dead yeah. memes and shit. I feel like if you did it in the right way, it would be funny. 
Yeah, if they were like if, ironic about if, it. If, yeah, or if they did the joke of like, oh, Gex is washed up and he's trying to stay hip with the kids. Like Honestly, if that, that would was be the kind of Yeah, like a, like an old Gex who's trying to like stay hip or whatever. Like they could make a reference to like maybe some kids see Gex and they're like, oh, you're the the insurance salesman, right? And he's like, yeah, no, no, that that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that would be funny. As long I as think they there's don't potential with Gex. <laughs> as long as they don't have him get down with a full motion video woman again. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the last thing we need. <laughs> I, I don't think that would be allowed anymore. No, that cutscene is so fucking hilarious. Oh my god! And, and I thought the Sonic 06 stuff was bad, which is bad. <laughs> that is worse. Yeah, they straight up. She's like her full grainy full motion video <laughs> is sitting on the bed, and then Gex's CGI model just walks up. It's like, what were they smoking? They made this. Oh my god! It was a different era, man. Ironically, Different the time. N the N sixty four version just it completely omits her from it. Good. The a rare time cartridge space limitations was actually for the benefit. Yeah, God, that is such a funny fucking thing. Yeah, and oh, and I remembered. Yeah, the Gex trilogy was announced by Limited Run, I think, last year. But my guess is, with them, it's going to be a long time till we ever hear about it. Most so, likely. Yeah, though, to be fair, I think for this show, we'd probably just do the first Gex. So. Yeah, we'll probably just do the first Gex. We might cover two and three later. Yeah, like I would like to, I would like to play those. So I believe they're Andrew, both what, PlayStation? PlayStation, yeah, uh, PlayStation and N64, although the N64 version of uh, Enter the Gecko is not very good. Yeah, I would just, for those, I'd probably just play the PlayStation version. They're probably not on Steam. I doubt I, it don't think so a gex 2 was hard to find anywhere for a while let's see i type in gex and i get nothing yeah Th thankfully and they're not really expensive games they might be on my abandoned well i i probably wouldn't shouldn't get the pc versions of those if they've never been re-released i'd probably just emulate the playstation one versions yeah it's not super hard yeah <laughs> do, do you, remember, you remember the advert for Gex 3 that was just Gex like spread across like her fucking boobs yeah. and that was the ad. <laughs> I've seen that before. It was like Jesus, oh, what a it, what a it, different time. It screams desperation. Yeah. That's what that's what it says to me that they were they were like, "Oh, these games really aren't hitting. We need to do something." That was I think that that was I think the point where they realized I think Gex has hit his uh end of the end of the line at this point. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, and isn't the N64 cover of Gex 3 like him doing the Steve Austin thing? Yeah, like because they completely uh, changed everything. It's like, why the hell? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if they had made the games good, it would have been fine. Yeah. Easy peasy. Also, like, I, I it always throws me off whenever I hear, like, the British version of Gex because uh, he's got, like, that, like, weird, like, uh, Cockney accent in two for whatever reason. <laughs> He would be a North of England guy. But then in Gex 3, he speaks in like jive talk and it's really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. It's it's bizarre. I mean, thankfully, we had we had a. Uh, uh, the same guy for all three games. I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, John Gex. <laughs> oh God, this is going to bother me. What was this? what was Gex's voice actor's name? Oh yeah, that's the cover where he's like, yeah. Oh yeah, holding... Dan Dana Gold. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's the cover of Gex Three where he's holding the lady's boobs. Yeah, like like that's definitely a thing. I forget what it was where like she's wearing like jeans but no top, and then she's like this, and then Gex is behind her, gripping on the boobs. You know, yeah, a giant gecko. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm glad that one wasn't called Enter the Gecko. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh geez but uh yeah so crystal dynamics definitely one of the brightest stars to come from 3do love them honestly like i think they were the second most prolific next to ea yeah i would say so we might find more as we go on but uh there there, there might be some japanese devs that were pretty prolific on the 3do because the 3do we haven't really gone into but it had a surprisingly strong japanese market mm. especially for for what it was 
Yeah, I mean, and that's not even counting just the porn games. <laughs> <laughs> For real. But he, but even still, you know. That's why if that's why if anyone's trying to find a 3DO, you're gonna notice you'll find a lot of Japanese uh, FC tens. Yes, and, and the porn the porn games were American. There probably was Japanese ones. I just don't. Oh, know there was them. there was weird hentai games as well. But oh yeah, of course. They of course. aren't they aren't nearly as interesting. <laughs> that's sad. Depending on who you ask. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, next week uh, we're covering the big one, so that'll be a oh, boy. That'll be a fun time, but uh, yes. Till then, guys, uh, you can find us on uh, all the major podcasting platforms, particularly Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, you can find us on YouTube with a video version of the podcast that'll probably be up shortly before the uh, uh, audio version. And you can find all of our links at Linktree slash The Barber Who Games. And if you'd like, you can join the GNC Podcast Network Discord server uh, for all things gaming, collecting, uh, 3DO, GNC, talk gaming, anime, all sorts of nonsense. And with that, guys, we will see you all later. Bye-bye.